Don't you dare say a word. I get it, it's late spring, almost summer, and I'm over here talking about shredding these mountains. But when was the last time you shredded some slopes? The early 2000s always seemed to be like a peak of like so many different genre of games. And I noticed recently, in my recent uh, studies here, that snowboarding games seem to be thriving during that time. And even nowadays, we don't really see any excitement around snowboarding games or releases of them. But there was one series in particular that seemed to be like the front runner of these games. And that series was SSX. <laughs> Now, I had no idea that SSX stood for snowboard, hold on, snowboard supercross, okay? In my mind, um, it stood for snowboarding still extreme with like a capital X in the, in the front of it because, you know, it's cool as fuck to do that. Um, don't ask why, that's, what, that's just what my mind was telling me, okay? But these games received so much love and praise, with the first three installments receiving over 90% across a majority of their ratings. Looking into the development of SSX was so insane though, because if they never came up with this game or invented it, we wouldn't have the sport border cross. The producer of the game is Steven Re Rec Shaft Rex Schaffner, Rex, Re Steven, the, he's, it's just Steven, okay? Who was a professional skier? The professional skier to video game developer pipeline, it must be a real thing. Is that real? Can someone confirm that for me? Is that you? If that's you, let me know. What he wanted to do is he wanted to combine motocross and snowboarding, and with this idea that he invented, that's where the Olympic sport border cross came from, so I'm just saying. Like, when are people going to start taking inspiration from NBA Street Volume 3? And then, SSX was released as a launch title for the PS2. But just a year later, they released probably my favorite SSX in the series, SSX Tri- SSX Tricky. This is gonna be very, very interesting. Shit! I forgot about the copyrighted music. One of the biggest features of uh, Tricky was the Uber tricks, which are these incredibly unrealistic, like over-exaggerated tricks that most of the time involve the player removing the board from their feet. And listen, as someone who's like regularly hitting up those black diamonds, and I, I don't do that. I don't know why I lied. But as someone who goes down the bunny hills, that's real, that's actually not a lie. Uh, detaching a board just mid-trick is not something you can really do. To get these uber tricks, you have to fill up your adrenaline bar. And if you can perform six uber tricks in a row, you then can have unlimited boost for the rest of the race. This is definitely me playing. I swear to god, this is definitely me playing this game. Not someone I know who's like really good at the game, showing me these tricks. <laughs> nuh -uh, no, definitely not. Why would I lie? I, I never lie to you guys. You know this. I'm basically an expert, though, when it comes to these tricks. It may not come easy for you, but like, this shit, it just comes naturally for me. Hey guys, watch this. Holding down A, this button, I think. Uh. Oh, we gotta land, we gotta land, this way. Yeah, whatever. There's also a lot of like fun and personality put into this game. And it's not as vanilla as like the first game. Like every character has like their certain tricks that they can do. Like Simon and Brody being able to do the magician trick. You also have the announcer in this game who is just always constantly shouting out some really silly lines. You know, like there's one line that he'll say where he's like, call your mom into the room and show her these tricks or something like that. Mom! And the shortcuts are really silly too. You can get abducted by a UFO in Mercury Meltdown. Somebody help me! Somebody! And these ones aren't really meant, I mean like, as shortcuts, but like, 
you know, you'll, you'll end up winning the race. But you can skip a couple of these courses just completely. In Tokyo City Megaplex, you can beat it in 16 seconds by spamming the respawn button when you fly up the first wind tunnel. And you can just jump past this billboard at the start of Aloha Ice Jam and fall all the way to the end of the level. Coming out two years later after Tricky is SSX3. You're tuned to Radio Big. I'm DJ Atomica, the eyes and ears. Wait. Where's Rozelle? This was their biggest title. This sold over 1 million copies. And it was looked at as like one of the best snowboarding games ever made. And in 2018, they re-released it for the Xbox One. In SSX3, we get to see some new characters along the side of some returning ones like Moby, Zoe, and Simon. I don't know what they did to Simon. He's so chill now. He's calm. I don't, I don't know what they did to my boy, but. Hey, Simon. Like he's ready to go and I appreciate that about him. But unlike previous games in the series, which contain unconnected courses, free ride mode also allows players to freely roam the open world, consisting of all courses in the game. And it is possible for the player to ride from the top of the mountain all the way to the bottom without stopping or reloading each course. This kind of reminds me of like Wii Ski and Wii Ski and Snowboard, you know, like just being able to go down each course throughout the entire mountain. Watch this, uh, uh. Oh shit, this must be the new snow they added into the game. I don't know what they meant by that, by the way. <laughs> okay, don't worry. I This time, I promise you, I will actually show you some like really good gameplay. 20 times better than what I could do in SSX Tricky. Just like wait until you can see what I do in 3. Just be glad I didn't play off the Game Boy, okay? You're lucky.